When the NASA space shuttle program ended, the remaining three space shuttles had only flown 25, 33, and 39 times respectively, which is not even half of their expected flights of 100. Not to mention that NASA didn't even have another launch vehicle. So why did NASA stop launching space shuttles and what have they been doing for the last 8 years? Make sure to stick around until the end to find out. Welcome to Hari Sabis. There are 5 main reasons that NASA stopped the space shuttle program starting with finances. In one sentence, the space shuttle program was simply way too expensive for NASA to continue. It never became the low cost reusable solution that they were looking for, and every single time they wanted to launch it, it would cost an extra $500 million. To put that all in perspective, their yearly budget is only $21.5 billion and they had a total of 135 launches. That means that they ended up spending $67.5 billion on just recurring and launching fees, which is over 3 years budget. The total cost of the space shuttle program was about $196 billion, which is almost 10 years of funding. And during the same time period, they were also building the International Space Station, which also required billions of dollars. The total cost of the International Space Station was $150 billion, and while NASA didn't pay all of this, they paid a pretty significant chunk. And at the same time, they were also launching several smaller satellites around Earth. The Space Shuttle Program, the International Space Station, and small satellites around Earth almost cost NASA upwards of 20 years of full budget. This consumed most of NASA's budget, and there was very little left to return to the moon or launch rovers onto Mars. The space shuttle program was simply not financially sustainable. There was also pressure from the government to move on. President George Bush announced that to return to the moon and explore Mars, NASA would reallocate $11 billion from the next 5 years of funding over onto this. But they would only be given about a billion dollars extra per year. In order to accommodate for more work with nearly the same budget, NASA had to sacrifice something big. And the obvious choices were either the International Space Station or the Space Shuttle program. But the International Space Station was much more recent and had better future prospects than the Space Shuttle program, and so the Space Shuttle program had to go. If they really wanted to, they probably could have budgeted better and accommodated for all three of these tasks. But developing space technology always takes longer and much more money than expected, so this was definitely the smart choice. Also, money wasn't the only problem, there was also a lack of manpower. There was a very limited pool of people who had expertise in space flight operations. And there was an even smaller amount of people who had expertise in human space flight operations. And the thing was that most of these people already worked at NASA either on the space shuttle program or the International Space Station. Thus, to embark on these new tasks given by the government that didn't require space shuttles, it was a clear choice to shut down a space shuttle program and redirect those people over onto new programs. This way, the reallocation of the budget wouldn't hurt the International Space Station. Also, NASA's space shuttle program didn't meet expectations. At first, they thought that they could actually launch a new space shuttle every single week. They were really looking for a low-cost launch system whose development costs could be quickly recouped by freaking access to space. But by the mid-1980s, it was clear that 52 missions a year was simply unrealistic, and they lowered the max to 24. Not only was their mission count reduced by over 50%, but they had other severe issues. The final design of the space shuttle was 20% over the initial specified weight. This made it impossible for them to launch US Air Force's payloads into polar orbits like originally anticipated. Also, the space shuttle's main engine was highly complex and maintenance intensive. This resulted in extensive inspection time after each flight and made the turnaround time even longer. Several more setbacks made turnaround time even longer and the program didn't accomplish many of its original goals. Its launch rate peaked at 9 in 1985, an average of 4.5 over the whole program. This is nowhere close to 24, much less 52. They were way off the hypothetical schedule and there were several disappointments along the way. There was also major risks in launching these space shuttles. Out of the five they had, two of them are completely gone. And to be honest, it was unlikely that the remaining three would each get to 100 space missions. And so for safety reasons, it was better to just stop the program. On January 28, 1986, the space shuttle Challenger blew up just 73 seconds after launching. 
This was because the O-ring seals were not able to sustain the really cold temperatures, and this killed the entire crew, including seven people. And a year before President Bush made the announcement to reallocate NASA's budget, on February 1, 2003, Space Shuttle Columbia broke apart upon re-entry, killing seven more crew members. This was caused by a small gouge on the left wing that absorbed too much heat. As it was evident, even the smallest of things could lead to fatal consequences. And the main problem was that NASA officials didn't even know that these small issues would cause fatal consequences. As a result, these problems simply could not be anticipated and it was just a matter of time before another tragedy occurred. So due to the inherent risk of space exploration, it was good for NASA to end off on a good note. If these issues were to happen in the 1970s, they definitely would have continued to explore because there was a lot more things to explore. But by 2011, they had been consistently launching space shuttles for the last 30 years. And they always had a crew at the International Space Station at all times. As a result, the space shuttles were simply just vehicles to reach the International Space Station. They were simply not that big of a purpose to continue to launch space shuttles. NASA had already completed extensive research on the effects of microgravity on the human body, and they could continue to do research by simply sending their crew members through shuttles of other countries. On top of this, SpaceX was launching their own private rockets at this time. While those rockets failed at first, they did eventually succeed, and Boeing was also embarking on similar work as SpaceX. NASA could save billions of dollars and a lot of manpower by offloading the transportation of astronauts into space onto private companies in other countries. They had started to see diminishing returns after 40 years of constant exploration. Frankly, it was meaningless for NASA to continue to launch space shuttles when there was other ways for them to send their astronauts into space. And this way, they can focus onto other new work. So what in the world is NASA doing today? Well, they're not sitting around. They've actually been developing and launching several rovers and exploratory devices to other planets and asteroids. For example, the InSight Mars rover is set to explore the inside of Mars. And the first asteroid return mission landed on the asteroid in August of 2018 and it is set to return in 2023. They are also working to design and fly experimental planes called X-planes. This includes low boom flights which could open the door to supersonic flights over land. They also have advanced solar electric propulsion, deep space navigation, new green propellants, and in-space manufacturing and assembly which will all aid deep space exploration. And of course, there is Mars exploration. President Trump just recently authorized $19.5 billion in funding for NASA. And it's been a long time goal for NASA to land astronauts on Mars in the 2030s, and right now, they're looking at 2033. So clearly, it's quite a while from now, but eventually, we will get there. NASA's space shuttle program was a revolutionary program that made it possible to reuse space shuttles for space exploration. However, the space shuttle program was not as good as originally expected and there were several issues along the way. Not to mention the inherent risk in repeatedly relaunching these shuttles. Not only did NASA lose two space shuttles which cost them billions of dollars, but 14 crew members lost their lives. With mounting pressure from the government to move on and eventual diminishing returns especially due to the International Space Station, the most logical decision was to end the space shuttle program in order to redirect money and manpower and most importantly, avoid risk. And that is exactly what NASA did. But that doesn't mean that NASA is done and they were actually aiming big to reach Mars in 2033. But despite all of this, the space shuttle program was and will always be a major step in space exploration. That's all I have for you guys on NASA. Make sure to comment down below what company you would like me to cover next. Also, if you guys like this video, then make sure to drop a like and consider subscribing if you'd like to see more videos just like this one. But until then, I'm Hari, and I'll see you guys on the next one.